task today is to learn how to name acids and covalent compounds. Acids are compounds that are electrically neutral. And what that means is the overall positive charge of the cation is equal to the overall negative charge of the anion. Acids, acids are recognized very easily because their cation is hydrogen. So examples is going to be something like this, HCl, that's an acid, it's anion is chloride, but it's cation, it's cation is hydrogen. Another example, HCN, okay, cyanide is its anion, but it's cation hydrogen. It's another example. H3PO4. Phosphate is the anion. Hydrogen is the cation. Why do you think there are three hydrogens for every one phosphate? That's the answer right up here, the very first sentence you wrote. Our question then is how do we name these things? What do we call them? HCl, HCN, H3PO4. How do we refer to them as an acid? The rules for naming acids depend on whether the anion contains an oxygen. This is an example of an anion that contains oxygen. These two acids have ion, anions that do not contain oxygen. So the rules for naming this acid is different than the rules for naming these two acids because this acid, H3PO4, has an oxygen, whereas HCN, HCl does not have oxygen. So let's start with acids that have no oxygens. The anions have no oxygens. So we are always going to use the prefix hydro, and we will always use the suffix. So let's do this. First of all, we have HCl. Okay, we have no oxygen in our anion. So we are going to say hydro, hydro prefix. And we're going to use the root of the anion, chlor, chlor. And then we're going to add the suffix ic. Hydrochloric acid. Again, how do we know it's an acid? Hydrogen is the cation. Let's look at this next one. HCN. No oxygen here, right, in the anion. So hydro Okay, what is this polyatomic ion? It is cyanide. So we will say cyan. And then instead of the I, 
we are going to add ick, hydrocyanic acid. Let's do, oh, I made a typo. That's not good. This should not be capital R. It should be H. So capital H, capital B, lowercase r. There we go. So Br is the anion. No oxygen. So we'll start with hydro. Br is going to be bromine, bromide ion. We're going to say bro. Hydrobromine. What about if they have oxygen in the anion? There's never going to be a prefix, and the suffix is going to change depending on what the name of the anion is. If the anion ends in eight, the suffix is going to be ick. If the anion ends in it, the suffix is going to be us. So our cation is hydrogen, that's how we know that it is an acid. What is the name of this anion? The name of this anion is nitrate. Nitrate. So how are we going to name this thing? Well, there's no prefix. So we're going to say, we're going to take the root of the anion, nit. Ni because nitrate, the anion ends in eight, we are going to use the suffix ick. Nitric acid. Notice, no prefix. The anion, phosphate. Eight. Ick. So this one, and you'll get comfortable with them, you will. This one we're going to say phos for, not just phos ick, phos for ick acid. Let's do one more acid. <clears throat> so our anion is SO3, negative 2. That's the reason why we need two hydrogens here. So the name of that anion is sulfite. Sulfite. It. Us. So this one we will call sulfurus. That's how we name the acids. Let's talk about covalent compounds. Covalent compounds are usually composed of non-metallic elements. Very few exceptions. There are a couple, but in general we recognize covalent compounds because it's non-metals bonded to non-metals. The name of the first element in the formula, that doesn't make any sense, does it? <laughs> we name the first element in the formula first, and then the second element we add "-ide", to the root. Covalent compounds are actually very, very easy to name. So, I apologize for how awful that sentence is. But we're going to name 
the first element of the formula, and it's just go, that's what gets named first, and it is the same as the element's name. So, the first element in this covalent compound is silicon. So we're going to simply say silicon. Okay, and the second element is carbon, but we're going to take its root and add I. So this thing is called silicon carbide. Now the thing with covalent compounds, it is really common for one pair of elements to form many different compounds. For example, we have two different carbon-oxygen compounds. Carbon with a single oxygen, carbon with two oxygens. So what are we going to say? We're going to call both of these things carbon oxide. Carbon oxide? No, we can't call them both carbon oxide. So there's got to be a way for us to distinguish between these two things. And so the way we distinguish between them is that we use Greek prefixes to alleviate any confusion. So let's write down the Greek prefixes. Mono means how many? One. Di is two. Tri is three. <laughs> Tetra is four. Penta is five. Um, isn't that sad? I have to look. Hexa I should have had to look. Hexa is six. Seven. Hepta is seven. Eight. Octa. Octa is eight. It's nine. Nona. I better make sure I'm right. I am. Nona. Uh, Nona. Yeah, Nona. And then number 10 is what? Yeah. Okay, so how do we name these things? Well, no, I can put the things. Okay. Um, we're going to name the first element first carbon. How many oxygens did it? How many oxygens do we have? One. So it's going to be. Uh, monoxide. Right? So that one is carbon monoxide. What about that one? Uh, the second one is going to be carbon. And then how many oxygens do we have? Two. Dioxide. Hey, covalent compounds are easy to name. Really easy to name. We can go ahead and uh, leave out the prefix mono from the first element. So if there's only one of the first element, we don't ever use mono. So we, do, we wouldn't have called the previous ones monocarbon monoxide or monocarbon dioxide. So if the first element, if there's only one, we don't use the prefix mono. All right, and let's see. Let's um, let's name a couple of these so that we can see. There's just a couple more things we um, we generally leave out. Okay, so the first one we've got two nitrogen, so we call this thing dinitrogen. And then we've got four oxygens. So the prefix for four is tetra. 
but we don't call it tetraoxide. We leave off the A because that's weird, tetraoxide, and just call it tetroxide. Okay, so that, um, oftentimes we will leave off the A if um, it just sounds too, too mouthy. Here, tetraoxide, tetraoxide. Okay, and let's see, what's the other thing? Okay, so this is, um, well, you do this real quick. P2S6. Diphosphorus. Six sulfurs. What is that? Hex, hexa, diphosphorus, hexa sulfide. All right. So covalent compounds. Relatively easy to name. And then we have weird things too. So we do have compounds. The covalent compounds that are that contain hydrogen generally have common names. Go by common names. Don't follow this sort of thing. So first of all, we've got this one. We know the name of that one, right? We call it water. We don't call it dihydrogen. Dihydrogen monoxide. It's not what we call it. We could, but we don't ever. It's always water. This one, we don't call this carbon tetrahydride. We call this thing methane. And we're going to learn rules for naming hydrocarbons, compounds that have simply carbon and hydrogen. And then last but not least, we've got this one, and we don't call it nitrogen trihydride. We call this thing Okay, these are the notable exceptions to following the rules for naming, uh, but the majority of the time we are going to use Greek prefixes to name covalent.